All right, I am fortunate to be here with Paul Zintarski, uh, who are now, what's your official title? You, I know you're retired from the district, but... Right, I'm, I'm the Learning Readiness PE Coordinator for District 203. So we can go to learningreadinesspe.com to right. find out exactly what's going on here in Naperville. Yes, you can. And, you know, one of my students have, have, has asked you, Trent asked you the question, what was the biggest challenge to convince your administrators and high superintendents that the importance and the benefits of creating an early morning learning readiness program? Well, Trent, that's a good question. The answer is you have to figure out some way to collect data. So the people who were involved in my program to begin with, I told them we needed to collect data. We collected data at the end of the first semester because if it, the data didn't show that it was working, we were going to be able to try and tweak the program. However, the data showed that it worked. So the second year, my administration decided they weren't going to have the kids come in before school. It was going to be part of our daily uh, program. And so we've now to the point where we have four sections of learning readiness PE prior to classes kids start with. Now, the, the, you've said uh, in your videos that this is a school of over 3,000 students. And coordinating that at an at administrative level in terms of scheduling courses, qu scheduling courses is a nightmare already. Yes, but sir. now you're trying to say that there's you have to rejig the, the the courses and the schedules just for these people that self-select into early morning learning readiness. Right. That's that, a big commitment. That, that is a big commitment by the, by the administration because those students have to be hand, hand scheduled. You can't just put them in the hopper and let, let the computer spit them out. So they're hand scheduled accordingly based on their needs, whether they need the help in math or whether they need the help in reading. And so again, a commitment by the administration. But once you showed them that it worked for those students who were struggling, it became a no-brainer. We are all in the education market to be a help to students. If you're not getting in this business to make a difference in the life of students, get out. We have enough bad PE teachers in the world. We don't need any more. But at the same time, if you're in here to make a difference in the life of kids, what you bring to the table as a physical education teacher is understanding the brain science, understanding how exercise prepares the brain for learning. Then we, as phys ed teachers, have to advocate for ourselves. Nobody is going to come by and pat us on the back for being a PE teacher. We're the Rodney Dangerfields of education. Nobody gives us respect until we earn it by showing them what we bring to the table. For us, that happens to be brain science. And then along the way, that helps us defeat childhood obesity as well because our kids are active. So the physical activity, or at least at least the you know the physical skills, is just almost a byproduct of overall programming and o the overall part of the wellness program. It's not the only focus. It's not teaching the physical. It's teaching through the physical. As I talk to people who come, I came to Naperville in, two, in 1983, and in 1984 I was made the department chairman. Naperville School High School was built in about the eight, uh, late 1890s. We didn't win our first state championship until 1993. That's when we made the switch from teaching sports to teaching fitness, health, and wellness. And since then we have won 18 state championships in all kinds of sports from tennis to soccer to football to baseball to volleyball to basketball. Uh, we, you know, we've been blessed, but it wasn't until we made the switch away from teaching sports and PE to more of a wellness, fitness-based model. Is that the irony of it all? Is that you, you move away from teaching what you think will help the sports skills uh, to something that's more beneficial to the health, and overall, that's that's what ironically helped your sports teams. Right, and in reality, there those kids who are now our athletes at the high school. A lot of times, they're getting that. At, sports camps, you know, the parents are, the parents don't want to deal with them during the summer, so they're sending them to sports camps, and they're picking up their skills that way. If we as coaches at the high school level, if we as coaches can have kids who come to us that are fit because they're fit through our PE program, we can spend more time on strategies and some skills that we think are important for our sport, but we don't, you know, with, without having to spend so much time on conditioning. I guess I have one last question about coaching. How do you you know, how do you monitor your teachers so that they don't put more time in their coaching than they do their teaching? How, how is the accountability for phys ed teachers, especially here in, in Naperville, which is, you know, the standards set so high, how do you kind of monitor that? How do you keep the teachers accountable? 
to the commitment to well, through, lifelong learning? Through the evaluation process, that we're very blessed in that at the high school level, uh, we have then department chairmen, like I was, and it was my responsibility to evaluate staff. And I knew, because I did the hiring, and I knew if I hired a good phys ed teacher, they would be a good coach as well. You can't, you can't be one without the other. You, coaching is nothing more than teaching. And so if you're a good teacher, you're going to be a good coach. Well, as I would hire them, the understanding was you're going to be expected to, to teach. Um, and as I evaluated them, if all of a sudden things were going bad, then their evaluations went down. Uh, there were a couple of times I had let people go who focused too much on coaching and not enough on teaching. And, and how was that taken by the rest of the coaches and the rest of the administration? And Eye-opening experience. They, you know, they thought that they were safe if they were in the football program. They thought that they were safe if they were in the basketball program. And it wasn't the case, and I fired both males and, and females that just didn't work out in the classroom. They thought that they were going to come in and just coach. Anybody, you know what, they pay AAU coaches all kinds of money to coach. They make all kinds of money with their AAU programs. If that's all you, if that's all you want to do is coach, then, go, then go that route. Stay out of the schools. We need quality, professional, physical education teachers to deal with our kids on a daily basis. I, my, the statement I always say is physical education is for every student every day. Athletics is for Friday Night Lights. Final message to SUNY Cortland students uh, preparing to go out into the teaching world. All right, students at, at Cortland, let me just tell you this. Try and understand the brain science. Ad, administrators in education only understand uh, state scores on tests. And that's the value we bring. We prepare the minds for learning because we exercise our kids wholeheartedly in PE class. That's the skill set you need to bring in. If you're going to depend your life or your profession on how you're going to improve somebody's free throw ability, if I am a board member and I'm going to run a, and I'm a bank and I own my own bank and you tell me you're going to improve my son's free throw ability, I'm going to fire you because my son isn't going to play basketball. When I retire, he's going to take over the bank. But if I can tell you as a phys ed teacher, I'm going to help your sons prepare for learning because of the brain science. Oh, by the way, I'm going to make them healthy too, which will affect health care down the road. Then I bring a value, not if I can teach, not if I teach skills. Paul, it's been an honor. I appreciate all the time you spent with us yesterday and today. Thank you very much, and continue on in your mission. One last thing. It's a great profession, students. Education is a, is a great, I spent 40 years doing it and I don't regret it, I'm still involved with, with it, so good luck to you. Thank you.